Okay, I'm creating this video as an introduction to our proteins unit. I will make a series of smaller, shorter videos instead of longer videos. So this one will just look at an introduction. So <clears throat> proteins are polymers of amino acids. And I just realized I became a slide reader there. I don't like to pride myself on that. So um, if you look at each of these single units, and this is so simplified, as a unit, um, this is called a monomer or a single thing. Um, so when we put them all together, kind of like uh, these are train cars and we're putting these train cars together as a train, when they're all linked together, it's called a polymer. So there are about 20 amino acids, and if you look on this picture, you can see a little MET and a GLY and ARG. Those are three-letter codes for each of the amino acids, of which we'll learn more about in depth later. But in general, pro proteins are polymers, and the, their smallest repeating unit um, is an, an amino acid. So there's a very specific function for proteins in our body and uh, the majority of the tissues in your body are actually proteins. So um, they're very, very specific in the way they work in the body. And very briefly, we'll just go through some examples here. And I have a little note to remind myself that uh, the information on each slide shares quite a bit um, more in depth than what is necessary right now. So you don't need to worry about those details. So here's a category of compounds called fibrous protein. And um, they are um, coils of amino acids. And they're in this, this is called the alpha helix, this sort of shape. And they're all intertwined and together, the group of these make up the hair follicles, the hair follicle. So not the, not the follicle, the strand. So this very specific shape ends up producing the properties of that hair. Um, another type is called myoglobin. Myoglobin um, stores oxygen in your muscles. And um, I'm just going to go back a little bit and comment on this. So sometimes you see these ribbon sorts of features when we're representing uh, proteins. And it's such a simplistic rendition um, because as I show you in the next few models, you'll see that there are lots of different ways we can represent these. And they vary from quite simplistic to quite complicated. And you can see why we choose simplistic, I hope. So here is an example of myoglobin. Now, if you look, all of the atoms are represented here. And it really just looks like a huge blob. So this isn't that useful of a model for us. Um, however, if we look, uh, myoglobin is, consists, consists of this chain of amino acids, and the chain kind of follows this path. And there are actually two, I think, there are two chains here intertwined together. So um, this is a globular protein. It has a much different shape than these fibrous ones. Um, hemoglobin is used to transport red blood cells. Again, if you look at this, it just looks kind of like a blob. This is a more simplistic version of it, and I'll share some more uh, representations of the hemoglobin molecule um, in a little bit. So we can categorize uh, proteins as simple proteins or um, conjugated proteins. And a simple protein contains only amino acids linked together. And a conjugated protein contains um, amino acids plus something extra. So uh, this is uh, an example of a simple protein. We have human insulin, and this is a very simplistic way to represent it. The amino acids that make up insulin are always in the, the same amino acids in the same exact order. Human insulin contains two protein chains. Um, linked together. The molecules are linked together to form the structure. Now if we take a model and we put all of the atoms in, you can see that it gets quite a bit more complex and it's very hard to get at the, the actual nitty-gritty of what makes up this protein. 
um, whereas this one tells us what each of the amino acids are. So this, these different models give us different informations depending on what we're looking for. Now this is an artistic rendition of um, human insulin and in reality these atoms are not little tiny pinpoint spheres. They take up a lot of space. So when we pack them all into one space together it looks more like this. So an example of a conjugated protein is one that I talked about before. It is hemoglobin and hemoglobin transports oxygen through our blood. That's its primary feature. And Hemoglobin contains actually four protein chains all stuck together. And you see this little group here that's called a heme group. It has iron in it. And that is not an amino acid. It is something plus. It's something extra that's not an amino acid. That's a very important function for this protein. Because at each of these, in each of these protein chains, and there are four, there is this heme group, and you can see it represented here by a disc. That's where oxygen atoms travel, and they travel through your blood on your red blood cells until the oxygen gets dropped off where it's needed, and then it travels, the blood, red blood cells travel back to your lungs and pick up some more red blood cells. So it's just like a taxi for red blood cells. And here is the space filling model. Again, um, they're using some color here to show you the four different protein chains, but um, it's not quite as um, useful to us in terms of understanding, like in this one right here, you can see these, these swirls, those are called alpha helices. Uh, that tells us uh, information about each of the parts of the molecule that you can't really pick up from this sort of thing. So that is the, um, the end of this installment of my introduction to a, or of my unit in proteins. And um, I, again, I wanna keep this video somewhat shorter so that um, they're not too, too long and they're a little bit more manageable. So thanks for watching.